The heart of Colombia has been called Tolima, and it is so because of its mountain ranges and its valleys, where all the paths of freedom intersect with that of haughty men, a seedbed of generous ideas, a reliquary of the noblest traditions, a crucible where the audacity of the conquerors melts with the heroic resistance of the peahows. Altar where the great sacrifices of blood and pain are consummated, flag of insurgencies, cry of emancipation, pantheon of heroes, hope of the republic, land that never loves mantle slaves, nor ever feared but God. Tensión alta, caliente. Tensión baja, fría. O sea que a los órganos frescos le da enfermedad o por calor o por frío. Igual los bronquios, pulmones, eh, asma por calor, asma por frío. Y el hígado también le da enfermedad por calor o por clima. The Department of Tolima is located in the center of Colombia, a nation that is located in the northwestern corner of South America. It is the country in which the Andes mountain range is divided into three majestic branches, which cross the entire country from south to north, and which define the soul of the nation at all levels. The Department of Tolima is made up of the Magdalena Valley and the central and eastern mountain ranges. The eastern mountain range is present in our department, with an area of slopes and terraces that do not reach the tops of the Sumapaz Paramo. The mountainous area of the central mountain range boasts the snow-capped peaks of the Tolima, Ruiz and Santa Isabel volcanoes, which together with the Cerro Machin volcano, modeled the current landscape of terraces and plains, which characterizes the department. The valley is a vast alluvial plain, occupied today by pastures and crops, which must have been wooded in the past, with some low-lying areas of swamps and swamps. Time Horizon of Archaeology in the Department of Tolima Now, we are going to know the time horizon of the Department of Tolima. In his cultural chronology and archaeology, the history of Colombia is summarized. In the Tolima region, archaeologists have obtained evidence of groups of hunters, gatherers and horticulturists, dating from approximately 14,000 BC and disappearing around 3500 BC. From the year 3500 to 1000 BC, the Dark Age occurs in Tolima, in which there is no trace of human habitation in the department, coinciding with the end of the Dark Age of the Aegean, from 1000 BC. The first traces of agricultural and ceramic societies, which reached the highest point of ceramic art in Tolima. The Christian era brings descendant cultures of the previous ones with contributions from new immigrants. In the late period the Great Caribbean invasion reaches our lands. Since then and until the conquest, archaeologists have established four cultural periods, which are mainly identified by their ceramics, these periods are Pre-ceramic period from 14,000 to 1000 BC Late formative period from 1000 BC to 1 AD Regional classic of the year 1 to 800 after Christ. Late period from 800 to 1500 AD. The pre-ceramic period extends from the time the first human beings walked through our territory, until they began to use pottery, that is, from the year 14,000 to 1000 BC, coinciding chronologically with the end of the Dark Ages, in the Mediterranean Middle East. The first inhabitants of Tolima Grande were groups of hunter-gatherers, nomadic horticulturists, who exploited the plant and animal resources of the various landscapes. Evidence from this period has not been located on the Magdalena alluvial plain, perhaps, 
because they were buried by the eruptions of the Machin, Tolima and Ruiz volcanoes. Archaeologists have excavated the camps of these ancient settlers on hills and natural terraces of Chaparral, Roncesvalles and Fresno, dating between 11,000 and 3,500 years BC. In their daily lives, hunter-gatherers used stone artifacts to grind, pound, cut, scrape, and drill. The most representative tools of this period are the boulders with lateral wear, the smoothed plates and the hose to dig in the ground, which were used in the exploitation of fruits, grains, shells, palm nuts and other Andean resources. This technology demonstrates its adaptation to forests. Among the archaeological materials made of stone, there are human figures and artifacts used for the preparation of flour from tubers and roots. The knowledge about plants led to the domestication and cultivation of acara, sago, yakin, corn, beans, squash and other vegetables. On the other hand, on the other side of the Magdalena River, in the Panch area of western Cundinamarca, the investigations carried out at the archaeological site of Pubenza, in Tacaima, located approximately 90 kilometers south of Honda, indicate that 16,400 years ago these first settlers hunted megafauna prey, such as the mastodon, whose scientific name is Haplomastodon waringi. It lived in South America, in the mid to late Pleistocene, between 460,000 and 11,000 years ago. These animals lived mainly in the lowlands east of the Andes. The mastodon specimens reached a size similar to that of the current Asian elephant. They also hunted the Megatherium, whose scientific name is Eremiotherium sp. Megatherium, in Greek means, great beast, is an extinct genus of placental mammals of the order Pylosa. They were large ground sloths, relatives of the current sloths, which inhabited South America from the beginning of the Pleistocene until 800 years ago, in terms of size, they were only surpassed by some groups of land mammals. In the main square of the municipality of Villa Vieja in Huila, there is a life-size statue of this prehistoric colossus. In the area of the streams of Honda Tolima, no archaeological sites related to the hunter-gatherer stage have been found. It is known that, since the end of the Pleistocene, these human groups moved through the middle valley of the Magdalena River in small bands, the which they left behind as evidence of their hunting activities, innumerable lithic artifacts, generally found in the tertiary terraces far from the river. To date, only surface deposits have been documented near the area of rapids in the vicinity of the lower basin of the Guali River, on the Mesa de los Palacios. To the south of the rapids, zone there are only occasional finds of bifacial points related to the hunter-gatherer stage. The Dark Age of Tolima At the end of the pre-ceramic period there is a dark age that lasts 2,500 years, from the year 3500 to the year 1000 BC, there are no archaeological remains of any kind. Possibly the population was drastically reduced in this period, and the few habitation sites were swept away by avalanches and volcanic eruptions. After this period of darkness, several cultures of great artistic richness flourished in Tolima, whose originality, technique and beauty have not been surpassed until now. Late Formative Period The Late Formative Period extends throughout the first millennium before Christ, more or less from the year 1000 to the year 1 of our era. Around the year 1000 BC, a true artistic revolution began, a true dawn of culture in Tolima, most likely due to the arrival of immigrants from other regions of Abiala. For the first time, the Ptolemenses settled in farming villages, and pottery and goldsmithing began, with an artistic quality never equaled by any later people. In this period two cultures are formed that are constituted, in the pinnacle of art in our department. These primitive farming villages were located on the warm slopes and the flat valley of the Magdalena. 
They were made up of small groups of dwellings, settled on terraces and hills, adapted with artificial fillings. The houses were located near the watercourses, to take advantage of the flooded areas and the forests, where they grew corn and tubers, and exploited seasonal fauna resources such as fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and rodents. They also exploited flora resources, such as palms, roots, and fruit trees. For late formative groups, death had an integral meaning in the cycle of life, and the cycles of nature and water. It was also related to the karpas that structure the world, and the spirits and supernatural beings. The tombs were located in the same room terraces, but outside the houses. These are from a rectangular square well, at the bottom of which a sepulchral chamber opens, at a greater depth than the well. Its interior is oval in shape and large in size, with the entrance closed by large slabs. One or several bodies were deposited in the chambers, accompanied by offerings of vessels, food, stone, bone, shell, and metal ornaments. The quality of funerary trousseau, and the degree of elaboration, of some funerary enclosures, are indicative of social differences. Archaeological investigations in the high parts of the central Cordillera show that the temperate and cold floors were also occupied from the first millennium before Christ by sedentary and agricultural groups that settled on plains and ridges and on the hills along of rivers and streams. In Fresno, habitation areas with small shaft and side chamber tombs have been studied, dating between the 9th and 8th century BC. Towards the south in Kajamaka, Runcesvilles, Chaparral and Herrera, domestic areas and tombs without a chamber, or with a gate have been excavated, with rectangular wells, squares with walls covered by stone slabs, with an antiquity between the 10th century before Christ and the 3rd after Christ. The information indicates that the early cultural processes of the Andean slope had a different dynamic than those that occurred in the Magdalena Valley. Artistic schools of the late formative period. Early potters and goldsmiths of the valley and the Cordillera. Feather pluck culture. The first culture that we will talk about is the Aranca Plumas culture, located in the streams of the Magdalena in the municipality of Honda Tolima. The Magdalena River Valley constituted the main natural route that facilitated the displacement and permanence of both hunter and gatherer groups, as well as groups carrying agricultural and pottery techniques, providing means of subsistence, derived from the exploitation of a great variety of fauna and flora resources. The area of the rapids of the Magdalena River is located in a transition area between the upper and lower Magdalena regions. It has been intensely occupied by different human populations since pre-Hispanic times. Probably, the repeated human occupation in this area is due to the strategic benefits provided by its control, and the facilities offered by the fishing of migratory species. One of the main artisanal fishing areas of the Magdalena River is located in the rapids area. It is characterized by strong currents, caused by the outcropping of rocky strata and narrowing of the river, as a result of geomorphological processes. These characteristics make schools of migratory fish find more resistance in their movement, and many seek the shores to continue their journey or rest. There they are caught by fishermen more easily. Most of the archaeological sites found in the municipality of Honda and its surroundings are related to human groups carriers of agricultural and pottery techniques who occupied the region of the Middle Magdalena and north of the Upper Magdalena. The oldest evidence indicates that groups from the late formative period inhabited the area of rapids between the 5th and 1st centuries BC, as indicated by the results of the investigations carried out at the Aranca Plumas site. Ceramics constitute one of the main cultural elements that has been the object of study in archaeology. The study of archaeological ceramics has contributed to the identification of chronological sequences 
in various regions of the world, allowing the establishment of temporal relationships between different archaeological sites. It has also provided information related to distribution and trade processes over long or short distances, helping to understand not only economic aspects, but also intra- and interregional social interaction processes. With all certainty, the abundance of fish in the area provides us with a direct causality between the Honda Subienda and the pottery school of the Aran Capfeather style, the Ondema of the year 500 BC. They lived in an abundance of food and material wealth such that they had allowed them to have free time and thus develop intellectually, express their ideas, cosmogony and daily life artistically. The pots and other ceramic utensils were no longer simply household utensils, now they were works of art, elements of prestige for both their manufacturer and their owner. The most important late formative period site known in northern Tolima is the Aranka Plumas site. Was initially reviewed by archaeologists Haroda Reichel Dolmatov and Alicia Dushin in 1943. Subsequently, Reichel Dolmatov related the pottery found at this site to the late formative stage on the Colombian Caribbean coast of the Zambrano tradition and to the Sabana de Bogota of the period blacksmith. In 1993, Arturo Cifuentes carried out excavations and obtained a date from the first century before Christ, identifying two ceramic groups that he related to the formative deposits of the Sabana de Bogota and the Lower Magdalena. Aranca Pluma's ceramics have been identified in the municipality of La Dorada Caldas by Gomez and Hernandez in 1996, in the municipality of Liban Tolima, by Ruiz in 1994, in the municipality of Mariquita, Tolima by Salgado in 1998, and in the municipality of Coelho, Tolima by Cifuentes 2000. The pottery of the Aranca Pluma style, from the Honda area, to the north of the department, is distinguished by compound shapes, decorated with red baths and modeled appliques, scraffito, and incised designs, notches and dark brown paint in stripes and dots. The most common forms are globular and semi-globular pots, applied ridge vessels, bowls, bottles, which are decorated with paint, red slip, incisions, scraffito, and applications. The main characteristic of this pottery are the vessels with grooves at their base, and the cord-shaped appliques, plant forms and coffee seeds, and the great beauty of their slips, incisions and scraffito. Aranca Palmas Ceramic in the Dorado Caldas During the reconnaissance and archaeological prospecting stage, along the route of the Eco-Petrol Central East Gas Pipeline, carried out by archaeologists Alba Nelly Gomez Garcia, and Judith Hernandez. Several sites with archaeological evidence were identified in the Magdalena Media region that would be affected by the construction of the work. Some were selected to carry out archaeological excavations. One of them was located in the municipality of La Dorada Caldas, specifically in the Hacienda Papinta. Papinta is a pottery site with a well-defined stratigraphic sequence which allowed observing the cultural formation processes of the site and identifying the presence of two pre-Hispanic occupations. The evidence of the later occupation was associated with the Colorado's complex by Castano and Davila in 1984 and with those of Guaduas by Rojas de Podomo in 1975. The ceramic material from the deepest stratigraphic occupation was correlated with the material located in the period late formative of the Middle Magdalena by Cifuentes in 1989 and 1991 and by Hernandez and Cosés in 1989. The site is located on the flat top of a mid-Pleistocene terrace in the confluence of the Guarino River with the Magdalena River, 125 meters above sea level. Within a landscape of flat, slightly dissected and polycyclic terraces, that is, where erosion and sedimentation are cyclical, this process originated different stratigraphic sequences in the worked area. The archaeological material recovered, the location of the site, and the geomorphological characteristics, 
allow us to suggest the existence of a common settlement place for several families with living and farming areas. The amount and type of evidence found show the daily use of the site. The abundant ceramics, the characteristics and the deposit of the same indicate the permanence of the man in the place for a long period of time. In addition, the presence of a large number of lithics, including carving debris that implies the elaboration of artifacts, denotes an activity that requires spatial stability. But it is worth taking into account the possible funerary use of the site, since a few meters from this terrace, in higher parts, during the construction of a jaguar, some tombs were damaged. During the archaeological rescue field season, it was possible to observe part of a camera and a lot of material on the surface. Montalvo Type Ceramic School The Montalvo culture has its cultural axis in the central region of Tolima. It was identified for the first time in the village of Montalvo in the municipality of Espinal. The central Tolimense plain of the Magdalena River covers the territory that goes from the Saldana River basin to the mouth of the Coelho River. It presents a slightly undulating flat landscape, with gentle slopes forming plains and terraces, which do not exceed 350 meters above sea level. In general, this region is located in the warm thermal floor, with an average annual temperature of 26 to 28 degrees, and is part of the tropical dry forest ecoregion. At the end of the Pleistocene and the beginning of the Holocene, three large geomorphological units called fans were formed in this zone of the Tolima department plan. The Ibake fan has a very high position, so it is subject to continuous erosion processes, which has not allowed the conservation of very old soils. The Guamo fan undergoes the same process, but with less force, and the Espinal fan, being lower, unlike the previous two, is constantly covered by fine to medium sediments, such as silt and sand, and coarse sediments, such as stones and boulders of volcanic origin. The main rivers in the area, the Saldana River, the Luisa River and the Coelho River, descend from the upper part of the eastern slope of the Cordillera Central and cross the western margin of the Magdalena River Plain, originating extensive and wide basins. Hydrographic the great flow and the abundance of materials transported by these rivers have allowed them to build, in some sectors, embedded and incised valleys, with long slopes with high terraces on their banks and extensive plains. Most of the pre-Hispanic settlements that can be identified in the area of the Guamo and Espinal fans are located on high terraces near watercourses and in erodible valleys that present continuous excavations of their deepest parts and without the presence of sediments that renew the soil. In general in dry areas with little vegetation and poorly developed soil profiles and low fertility. Its ceramics are characterized by the diversity of shapes and sizes, the fine surface finishes and the sgraffito, an incised geometric decoration, alternated with black on red paint. We can find alcarazas, cups, incense burners, large bottles, fruit-shaped vessels and chairs. The human figure was represented in a realistic and schematic way. The local fauna was also represented in its ceramics. The Montalvo ceramic material seems to have stylistic and formal relationships with ceramic evidence described in neighboring areas, such as the western foothills of the Cordillera Oriental, specifically in the Bogota River Basin and with the north of the Magdalena Valley in Tolima. Likewise, they are associated with the early cultural tradition of the Lower Magdalena or second incised horizon of the Atlantic coast studied by Reichel Dolmatov in 1986. Montalvo pottery is represented by funerary elements, such as incense burners or stoves, cups and large bottles that, despite their possible utilitarian function, were not used as such, their use was only as a funeral offering. Numerous pieces of Montalvo ceramics, which are part of the collections of the Anthropological Museum of the University of Tolima, exhibit a complex decoration painted in black by direct application on a red bath of ferrous oxide, in which various variations of the structure of the sacred pair. Formal variability is found even in the graphic context of the same piece, as in this piece, 
where the bowl that forms the upper part of the incense burner is fully painted black on red by applying pigment to the coated base, or, in some cases, slipped. Engobe or engalba is the decorative ceramic technique that draws and paints the pieces with the ceramic paste that is obtained by mixing different types of clay. The most common traditional slip is red. As can be seen in this piece, the exterior is scraffito with various graphic elements, among others, with schemes of pairs of mushrooms. The so-called sacred pair is reiterated and articulated in different ways to cover the entire surface. The same thing happens with the decoration on the averted flat edge of the incense burners in which it appears in a complex geometry. Scraffito in pottery is a decorative engraving technique that consists of drawing with some type of punch, lines, motifs or shapes, scratching with impressions or incisions of variable thickness the clay, paste or ceramic material when the paste is still tender or scratching once dry or cooked. In the pieces, the complexity in the geometric construction of the designs is observed, in particular the treatment of space, not only as a distribution of specific elements in a limited and closed space, but at the same time, each grapheme is conceived structurally, by its articulation, symmetrical in the game of form and counterform. This type of pottery was used exclusively in the context of funerary rituals. The tombs, which in some cases are large, have access through a vertical shaft that can be from 2.5 meters to 3 meters deep, and two opposite chambers that house four to six corpses, and around it a variable number of pieces, which in some cases was 64 ceramics. The pieces do not show signs of having been used, nor wear on the annular base of the cups, nor traces of soot, in the presumed case that they were used as stoves or incense burners. In such a way we suppose that, although the stoves, given their ritual implications, marked by their special iconography, were not used for such a function, they would have an exclusively offering purpose, as part of the funerary trousseau, mycolatry, or veneration of fungi in Montalvo pottery. The representations of mushrooms are found in almost all the aesthetic expression systems of pre-Hispanic American cultures and have been described or referenced in various publications, as figurations of hallucinogenic mushrooms, or that, when ingested, produce psychotropic effects. These representations of mushrooms are part of the complex of practices that define the activity of the shamans, and therefore, have a deep link with all the other elements of the pre-Hispanic imaginary. The sacred pair. Two mushrooms are always represented, since it is indicative of a technical condition of the mushroom ingestion procedure, since these must be consumed in pairs, of which, each specimen must be chosen from a different site, a ritual characteristic that prevails until our days among the inhabitants of Oaxaca, who eat mushrooms. These and other post-Hispanic descriptions made it possible to interpret the ritual scenes that appear in the Codex Vindobonensis Mexicanus I, or the Vienna Codex. They explain what the Mixtec priests believed, which were the invention of the two main magical medicines, pulque and mushrooms, capable of producing intoxication and hallucination that predisposes the spirit to be in contact with the gods. From the saying, to be with the gods, comes precisely the term with which mushrooms are called in Nahua cultures, Tionanacatl. From these cases, the way in which the mushroom icon is configured is deduced. The convex figures with the ends turned inwards, represent fungi in a cross-section, which, in addition, are represented in pairs, and constitute, as Y Sun called them, the sacred pair. Representations of the sacred pair appear throughout South America. These representations are often linked to fertility symbols, such as hemipenes of snakes or alligators. Regional Classic Period The societies of the first millennium of our era, from the year 1 to 800 after Christ, a new ceramic style is presented in the central plain of Magdalena Tolima, which archaeologists call the Wavy Guamo complex. It is not yet clear if this change in ceramics corresponds to an internal cultural transformation, or if it is a style introduced by other people. As in the late formative period, the societies of this time built their houses on terraces, close to rivers of great flow, 
although the hamlets concentrated a greater population. They exploited the resources of the tropical dry forest, lacustrine environments, and burning plains. They cultivated corn and acara, took advantage of palms and fruit trees, hunted mammals, reptiles and amphibians, and practiced fishing. Their tombs, located near houses or in small cemeteries, are like in the previous period, with a vertical shaft with a lateral chamber, closed with slabs and separated from the shaft by a deeper step. Wavy Guamo Ceramic School This ceramic style was made at the beginning of the Christian era, in the central plain of Tolima. It was characterized by the presence of a large number of plates, pots, bowls of various sizes, pot holders and globular vessels with handles and deep grooves, and wavy incisions on the edges. Also common are appliques, notched ridges, and stripes of negative paint, in geometric designs of various shades. Despite the diversity in ceramic styles, it has not yet been possible to relate the stylistic decorations to other neighboring areas, although there is evidence of an association between the Guamo Ondulado and the Yotico 10 period. Also, it remains to be clarified whether the early complexes, Montalvo and Guamo Ondulado, belong to different human groups or if they are the result of gradual cultural changes within the same population. The decorations of the Guamo Ondulado complex are represented in the globular alcarazas with negative paint of various colors, grooves or wavy incisions are frequent, accompanied by handles, projections, or ridges on the edges, and various designs in negative paintings of various colors, on different slips. For this reason, the most common forms of the bodies of the Alcarazas present lobed shapes that symbolize or represent plants, that is, phytomorphic representations. The most common fruits of representation were pumpkins and pumpkins. In addition to its shape, its decorations were also characterized by containing tiny human or animal heads and faces, defined as magical or fantastic beings. The decorations of the most representative bowls contain schematizations of animals, including frogs, lizards and chiropterans, bats. Some ornaments presented very unusual decorations, as in the case of a whistling vessel in the shape of a bird, probably a Ptolemy's turtle dove, Leptotila canovri, and a cylindrical container, with the abstraction of a coiled serpent. Tolima-style goldsmith school late formative periods and regional classic, 1000 before Christ, 800 after Christ. The pre-Hispanic goldsmithing of Tolima has its own stylistic and technological features, such as its shape, which constitutes itself a school, and the use of the tumbaga, gold, and copper. These pieces have been found towards the north of the department, in the municipalities of Flandes, Armoro, Venadillo, Libeno, Villahermosa, Maraquita, and in the areas of Guamo and Soldana. The Guacaria and the illegal trade of objects have destroyed many archaeological contexts, and have prevented the exact characteristics of the goldsmith from each period from being established. The ore was extracted from the rivers, through Baracao, or from underground mines. The most important deposits of alluvial gold are found in the Soldana River Basin, especially in Atico, Chaparral, Rio Blanco, Ortiga and Guamo. The style of the Chigualas to Lima is characterized by techniques, such as casting and hammering, and by the presence of large pectorals and pendants, representing the schematic human figure, with features of birds, bats, felines and fish. They are objects of extraordinary visual force. To a large extent, this force originates in the symmetry and proportions of these pieces. In figurative terms, each one represents a rigid person, in an artificial position, and clearly ritual. According to the Mohans P. Howe of Southern Tolima, gold contains an energy that is transmitted to human beings, and that in all its essence is fertilizing. In the chain of symbolic associations, gold is light, heat, semen and power. The motifs represented in this metallurgy can be associated with ritual transformations typical of shamanism. New identities and energies, symbolized in the processes of metamorphosis of the different beings, typical of Amerindian thought. Heart-shaped pectorals, pendants with circular earrings, as well as solid human figures in beads and pendants are also common. 
some carrying musical instruments, or in a dance inscribed in a ritual context, whose purpose is to summon the spirits, protect people, promote happiness and health. Within the indigenous communities, these pieces are known as tunjos. In the Indian chronicles, they are called chigualas. For most of the current Pihau indigenous people, the ritual position of the chigualas represents the shamanic flight, whether symbolic, that is, the elevation of the spirit of the shaman to states of connection with the universe, or perhaps some nocturnal ceremony of jumping into rivers or moyas of water, which are practiced today by the shamans of the school of Mahans of Koyima, Emapai. This interpretation is influenced by the conclusions of the anthropologist Reichel Dolmatov and other successors, whose theses are very well supported. Some Mahanos midwives from the Koyima area say that this position is that of a woman giving birth, and that the anchor is a newborn baby with its umbilical cord. It is clear that the dorsal spines of the winged chigualas represent fish, or rather their power to swim, to live in the underworld, in the cold freshwater kapa, where the ancestors of the Pihau people live. The wings are the bird spirit that rises to the superworld, towards the domains of the sun. In the face appear features reminiscent of bats and other very human. Some Mahans say that the rabbit ears, which they wear on their heads, may be crowns of feathers, and on the anchor at the bottom, some Mahans say that it is a symbol of the underworld, of the great salty and cold lagoon, which is under the earth, at the beginning of the world. The ears of the head are possibly symbols of the auditory power of some animal, and the lower anchor, could also be the symbol of the use of hallucinogenic psilocybe mushrooms, which in this case would not appear in its sacred pair, because it would be representing the connection of the Mahan with the cold, dark and humid carpas of the world. It is noteworthy that, within the Chigualas, two types can be clearly identified, those that have wings and thorns, and those that do not. We could think that these are two different schools, but very related, or that they represent different beings. Unfortunately, almost all the archaeological contexts of the Tolima Chigualas have been lost, which prevents us from knowing their chronology, cultural belonging, territory of discovery, and others. Archaeological aspects of the pieces. Nuestras plantas son vivas, son curativas, nos ayudan a sanar a nuestros enfermos, como también en nuestras guerras nos ayudarán a envenenar a nuestros enemigos.
hasta llegó y no se acabará El chamán cantó los ícaros, el río subió y todo se llevó Un gringo al agua se cayó, se lo tragó una boa y luego lo escupió La rebelión de todos los animales, los espíritus, los seres, todas las deidades Si uno no puede terminar con todos los males, humano y su método occidental La contaminación con petróleo, tiene enferma la selva de odio No se puede cazar, no se puede tomar agua, pero sí danzar como en la antigüedad ¡Sí! 